Hello everyone, we're going to discuss one final Modbus type today. I know that I've told you about serial Modbus and its 127 byte input and output buffers. And we've talked about TCP Modbus with its 1023 input buffers and output buffers. But there's actually one third type that we haven't gone into and that is plug-in Modbus. Plug-in Modbus uh, is serial. And it's probably the preferred method of doing serial when you don't have a mod I.O. card, or if you want to use a mod I.O. card uh, with brains rather than the internal Mach 3 processing of a mod I.O. I have my mod I.O. connected to uh, my plug-in Modbus at the moment, so I'd like to show you under functional configuration, if we say set up serial Modbus control, you can see we come up with a completely different dialog than we do under the non-plug-in uh, related setup. In this setup, we have similar settings to normal serial Modbus, and we have the exact same test Modbus, but there's a difference. We have a checkbox for Modbus run on and off. We can turn off Modbus or turn it on with that simple checkbox. And here we have, on the uh, far left-hand side, we have configuration numbers, and you can have up to uh, 63 of these configurations. Each configuration can hold up to 127 uh, transfer registers. So let's take a look at a uh, quick example. As you can see, if you can read this, and you probably can't, so I'll read it off to you. I have configuration 0 enabled. I've given it a name of mod I.O. These names are usually read by a plugin, and they're really just there to, as a notification of what you're using it for. I only have two configurations turned on. They're both set to port 1. Uh, so that's serial port 1. Slave number 6, which my mod I.O. happens to be set to as a slave number. Uh, yours will probably be a 1 or whatever your slave number is for your uh, Modbus. And we can also tell it how often to refresh uh, the data. So on 25 milliseconds, uh, this tells the um, serial system to refresh this configuration 0 every 25 milliseconds. We are telling it the Modbus variables are located at 1150 and we want seven of them. So the first seven 16-bit words of the Modbus will be transferred in from address 1150 to addresses 0 through 6 on the um, plug-in Modbus, which is what I've named it, plug-in Modbus uh, registers in configuration 0. This will all make better sense in a moment. The uh, final uh, column here is direction. We tell it whether it's an input or an output. Input means we're reading from the PLC or the mod I.O. or whatever we're connected to. This is a very good screen for normal, general PLCs. And uh, configuration 1, which is the second one, you can see I call it mod I.O. channel 2. This is an output where I've given it a, a, um, a higher refresh number, meaning... I only want it to refresh this one every 50 milliseconds because my outputs to the mod I.O. I consider to be less important. You can juggle these refresh uh, numbers around and you can set as many configurations as you wish on a PLC so that certain words are pulled in faster than others and certain words are pulled out faster or slower than others. And you can see if you could read this anyway, you can see that what I've told it to do is starting at address 1040 in the Modbus uh, fill it with two registers. So it's going to take the first two registers from configuration one and send them into the Modbus starting at address 1140. Those of you for, who are familiar with a mod I.O. card will know that the uh, registers that you get from a mod I.O. and send into Mach 3 begin at address 1150. The addresses that you send out to in a mod I.O. start at address 1040. Uh, so here we have, basically, I'm doing two operations. Every 25 milliseconds, I'm sending seven registers from the PLC, or mod I.O. in this case, into configuration zero. And every 50 milliseconds, I'm sending two registers from configuration one to the mod I.O. on address 1040. Um, so using this screen, you can set up to 64 different configurations of uh, Modbus data. 
And each configuration has 127 bytes of data or words of data maximum that you can use. Uh, my mod I.O. is currently running at the moment and is every 25 milliseconds transferring in the first seven registers of the mod I.O. And every 50 milliseconds it is sending two registers out uh, to the mod I.O. And these are going into configuration 0 and 1. 0 is receiving data. Configuration 1 right now is set up to send data. Um, as I said, you can set up to 64 of these configura or 63 of these configurations and thus you can send whatever memory words you want at whatever timing intervals you want back and forth from any PLC. This is serial only, take note. This is not uh, TCP. Because TCP is so fast compared to serial, serial uh, PLCs you may want to be able to juggle your addresses this way to set up various configurations that run at various speeds, uh, more or less setting a priority for your data. Now, I have a brain running at the moment uh, with this particular um, configuration being used. I'll show you how we, uh, how we wrote it. Here is our brain editor. And you can see if I go to add an input and I select Modbus, there are three types of Modbus listed now. There is TCP Modbus, which we've already talked about. There is serial non-plugin enabled Modbus, which is the normal serial Modbus that you've been familiar with from the start. It is the Modbus that Mod.io typically uses. And then we have serial plugin Modbus. If in Mach 3 you've selected plugin enabled serial, uh, this is the one that you want to use. And you can see that when you select serial plugin enabled, not only do we set a Modbus address up here, and that number would be 0 to 127 for the data within that configuration group, but you set a configuration number. So by telling it that I want, say, address 2 from serial plugin enabled configuration 0, we would get Modbus address 2 plugin enabled. Uh, and it is currently uh, in configuration 0. And that's what this mod 2p0 means. Modbus address 2 plugin enabled configuration 0. The same thing happens when we terminate. We can, uh, let's just add a NOP lobe to this. And then we will click on that NOP and terminate it. You can see that we can terminate to uh, the same areas in Modbus. So we can send things from an input section of the Modbus uh, run it through a formula and send it back out to the Modbus. Or we could select mock control variables. And in this case, we could select the MPG1 count, for example. And this tells us then to take uh, address number 2 on configuration 0 of the plug-in serial, do no operation to it, and send it to MPG1 count inside Mach 3. That's the general creation of Modbus type of data in a brain. Let's take a look at what the effect of that is. I'm not going to save that because I already have one made. So uh, we'll go to brain control. You can see I have a mod IO MPG1 brain here that is enabled and running. I'm going to uh, hit view brain so that you can see it run. Interesting here is we can see that I'm using Modbus address number 6, plugin enabled, uh, configuration 0, and we see a flashing number. This is the timer tick variable coming back from a mod I.O. Uh, the mod I.O. is kind enough to send a message saying how long each message is taking. And it tends to be in uh, two millisecond uh, increments. So I've set a formula which says input A multiplied by 0 .002. Uh, the answer is shown now when you're viewing a uh, brain. You can see that the answer is floating some because the input timing is floating a bit. And that's being sent out to the MPG tick count. So the MPG tick count is informing Mach 3 exactly how long it's taken you uh, to give each message as you rotate an MPG or each message of the uh, Modbus coming through. It is not necessary to set a tick count. Tick counts... Uh, tend to make the MPGs on a PLC a little bit smoother, but if you do not put this line in, it wouldn't make any difference at all. Your MPG would still work. So the key of this brain is the second line, which is uh, Modbus address 0, plugin enabled, um, configuration 0. And then it tells us now 
what is in that register at the moment. And if I rotate my MPG here, you can see the number ch changing. The mod IO is sending me a new clock count or a new count of the MPG as I rotate it. You can see I'm feeding it into a NOP, a no operation lobe. The no operation lobe is simply passing the number 20518, which is what it's getting from the TCP. And we're terminating that out to MPG1 count in Mach 3, which is getting the uh, same number sent through to it. So if I close this brain viewer and close this and reset Mach 3, and I rotate the MPG, you can see that the MPG is now operating Mach 3. Now that's an MPG coming in from a mod IO. It is not being processed by Mach 3 at all. It is simply a brain taking the data from that MPG register and feeding it into Mach 3's uh, MPG1 counter. And this means that uh, you can feed an MPG in now from any PLC, whether it's a DL5 or a DL6 or basically any PLC with a Modbus attached. All you need to do is create a brain which selects the appropriate Modbus location and sends it into Mach 3's uh, MPG counter. From that point forward, you should be able to calibrate your MPG and move it. And the good thing about it is when you're looking at it on the uh, brain control editor or the viewer, uh, you'll be able to see exactly what is coming in and what is going out. Another good feature of this is any time that you create an input from a Modbus register, no matter what that Modbus register is, uh, you can watch in real time what the numbers are in that Modbus register and see what they're doing. On a terminated output, you can also see uh, the actual numbers being sent into Mach 3, and you can see them change in real time. Uh, this should be a big improvement over what we've had, and it gives you the ability to troubleshoot and debug a brain in real time to see exactly what's going on. This was just a quick demonstration, just a short video to show you what changes have been made. This version will uh, likely be released within the next day or two. That's it. Thanks.